I've never really been a big gamer myself. Rather than just playing games, I, I enjoy much more making them. A lot of people define themselves as artists, and what it means is that they have this need to express themselves. What I really love about games in general is the fact that, for once, you can be part of that piece of art. You can be part of the story. It's so much more interesting than just passively watching a movie, for example. You are part of that movie. This probably was what actually led me to start studying computer science. I thought that, you know, working in a university was a chance to explore and being creative, and instead this wasn't exactly what academia looks like. So that's what actually pushed me to look in you know, an alternative solution to explore different ways of making games, and I think this was what actually pushed me you know, recently into this job. I have a background in sci-fi, and I'm not just interested in you know watching sci-fi movies, but also in playing games that explore sci-fi in a very realistic way. So with Orbitalis, that's exactly what I wanted to explore. The majority of games I've played only have like you know a futuristic setting, for example, but they don't actually explore scientific questions or scientific matters. So I wanted to make a game that gives a glimpse of how complex it can be, how chaotic gravity can be. And I think that this is, you know, intrinsically beautiful. It's something amazingly beautiful within gravity. I first met Alan at an event that I was speaking at at his university. This really weird, excitable Italian man came up to me, like ridiculously excitable and very happy and enthusiastic. Oh, no. And he kind of weirded me out a little bit. And so he gave me his business card, which obviously was just a post-it note with his name and the email address scrawled on it. So that was Alan. And at one of these events, Alan saw me and he came running over and I was like, oh God, this is that guy. I was like, oh, are you, are you showing off a game? I said, like, yeah, I made this game. And I was like, oh, okay, let's, let's have a look at your game. So I had a playthrough of Still a Time, which is Alan's upcoming game. And at that point, I went, oh, he's actually a genius. He's actually a terrifying genius. And then I felt really bad for all the things I'd said about him. And he insisted that we team up. So we did this game jam called the, the Jump Jam Aberté, and we made Acceler Runner, which is the worst game ever made. I'm not sure how much press coverage it will be for the game that we're not selling. Because <laughs> we need all the press we can get so we can make all the zeros and pounds. So after Acceler Runner became a thing, Alan decided we should do more with it. And so we entered it into lots of competitions and expos and things. And for reasons which I can only put down to administrational error, it got accepted everywhere we entered it. And so we got to take it to Eurogamer Expo, which is the biggest consumer video game experience in the UK with our ridiculous running game. And so we actually got into contact with lots of different other indie game developers who are all super nice and let us use their characters for free. And suddenly we had all these connections with people who, in my eyes anyway, are way above where I am currently. And so I get the impression that everyone in indie games is really nice, apart from Alan. But everyone apart from Alan is really nice. Yeah, there's a place called Make Stuff up there, which yeah, is, yeah, yeah they're, they're really well known. That's really? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. cool. Oh, the Make Stuff helped us do the game. I've been making games since university, really. 
My final project was a mix of what I was interested in. It was animation, it was music, it was code. And my final project was a game. And it wasn't part of the course, but I released that to the world afterwards. I put it on the internet and it went viral. It basically got me my first job and that was making Flash games. And at that time I had a lot of freedom. I could do the art, I could do the coding, I could do everything myself. So it felt a very satisfying first job to have. We set up State of Play in 2008. Me and Luca are a husband and wife team. That's how we started State of Play. We now employ more people, but the key to State of Play was the fact that we were in a relationship. So we did some animations for Christian Aid. We had seven weeks in Sierra Leone to get across AIDS awareness in a really simple media that animation lends itself. We used a technique called rotoscope, which meant we filmed people and then afterwards animated them on top. This meant that we could animate really quickly because we already had the base footage. Um, we also got local people involved with animation and it was really rewarding. It went out on national television in Sierra Leone. The campaign was picked up and it won awards and we were really proud of that. I'm going to have it in my house. Lumino City was a game that we've spent three years on. And this has been a real passion project. We've believed in it so much it hasn't mattered how long we've taken on it. Our prequel to Lumino City, which was a smaller game called Loom, that won a few awards. And when we released our first trailer for Lumino City, that suddenly seemed to go stratospheric for us. We were getting people getting in touch with us who wanted to work with us. We've worked with Katrina, the architect, We've worked with model makers, we've worked with fine artists, and we couldn't have done this project without the help of lots of different people all pitching in. And that has been a really enjoyable thing to collaborate with people who are so good at what they do that it elevates the whole game. Do I know the camera? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. No, I can't. It's awful. Games are very technical, but you really can get hands-on with a game like Lumino City. And I think that takes it back to becoming something that artists can do again. I think it's important if it's going to be an artistic medium for you to be able to see the artist's hand in the work and it enables the artist to get their point across a lot more quickly because there's less distance between the initial thought and the hand, the paper and the audience than there would be if you were starting with a blank 3D engine and you were having to inject all the personality into that. And so I think there is this movement towards more individuality and a greater sense of freedom for the artist as well. Mm. 
making games is something I love doing. And I don't look at what focus groups say the games should and shouldn't be. I make something that's kind of personal to me because I think other people would appreciate what I create for me. And the BAFTA for Artistic Achievement goes to Lumino City. If, if you have an idea like this, and it doesn't matter how you want to make it, like just make sure that it happens. Employ people that you really like, and if, if something inspires you, you can make it however you want. So, yeah, without these people, that wouldn't have happened. So thank you, and thank you to everyone who's appreciated this game. It means a lot to us. So thank you.